But his position's looking pretty good here. Yeah, I was gonna say, he's in a position he should know well. This is right up his alley. Maxime, one of the most feared Sicilian players on the planet. But, but look 93. at that. 93, it's also threatening made on F1. Rook F1 is made, and he's going to the quarterfinals, a semi quarter finals, oh, semifinals. Oh my god, Maxime raises oh. his hands. Maxime. Oh my gosh, oh, what an oh. epic match. Oh, Holy oh, crap, Pawns of Blunders. The mate on F1, and it was the checkmate previously set up by the four key moat heard around the world. Queenie 2 was oh the only gosh. move to guard the mate. Okay, he would have gone down the exchange, but still chances. He plays Queen D2, and the reason it was over everybody is Rook F1, the only option was to trade. Maxime would have delivered the goods, but the Eagle has landed, and we now know who are all of our semifinals uh, competitors will be. we go here we go one more time it's the quarterfinals time here we go now here it's we go. just 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 here we go, here we go. let's do it Danny got the flow. Get all your feet. look at his hair reaching the timer i got no more lyrics <laughs> we've got the leon beast here we go now oh, oh, let's, here, we let's, go. Let's, here we go maxime has got the flow by the way so for those of you who don't follow chess.com as closely as you will now forevermore obviously hit the follow button maxime owes me a shaving on yeah, camera. He does. he does. So we beat them in a team chess match. Me and Hikaru. America beat France. Hashtag, right? Didn't get the memo. Obviously we won. But Maxime has still not shaved yet. He owes me uh, a facial hair shave off. Yep. So if maybe if he wins here and he's happy, or even if he loses and he's sad, we might force him to shave on camera. So stick around. I don't think, <laughs> but, I don't think he can do it right now. I don't think you know, so. Hey. I think Hik I see Hikaru in the Twitch chat, by the way. Shout out to yeah, Hikaru. he is. Gotta give Hikaru, Hikaru a shout out. Hikaru shaved. Hikaru, Maxime owes us, man. He lost to us. He owes us a shaving. All he right. Does. Well, we're ready. We're pumped. We've got 7,000 people who stuck around with us over that very short break. Thank you for being here. We've got our last quarterfinal matchup. Let me remind everybody where we stand currently in the bracket if you're just getting here. 
earlier today, Hikaru Nakamura in an epic, epic, very, very exciting comeback fashion. He was down a game with six minutes to go, won three in a row, and got by Ali Rizzi, Ali Riza Firuja. Levon Aronian dominated Sergei Karyakin. Sadly for uh, Karyakin, who played very well in Shamkir earlier, beating Vichy Anand today, uh, just didn't have a good enough internet connection, honestly, for that to even be a match. And Bortnik, I don't even know what to say. He just he swindled my heart away with that match. Uh, you know, silly rabbit tricks are for Bortnik because he just showed the kids what they wanted to see. <laughs> yeah, no, Bortnik's been unbelievable. I think he's the favorite no matter who he plays. That might be controversial because we'll see how NBL does. But with the way Bortnik swindles, I'm liking his chances. But, okay, but I, I'm taking it back already. I, yep. I bit off more than I could chew with that. In, in the matchup that we're about to see, the two and the seven seed, people should know that Maxime vache the Grave leads the head-to-head -head series between these two guys by seven wins, four uh, to four losses with two draws. So these two recently drew in the Swiss qualifier uh, earlier um, in the uh, in the week. So that's just some small little stats and data for you as uh, as the games will be getting underway here momentarily. So Maxime shouldn't be surprised. I mean, he is the two seed. He is the favorite. But uh, what kind of chances do you give Ponza in this matchup, Robert? Some pretty good chances. It's only 30 minutes, which is a nice concentrated time. And the reason why I think that helps Ponza more than it would a longer time control, because I do think, as the I say this every single match, the stronger player in classical chess, if they're about equal or you know, it's a kind of close match in terms of bullet strength, I think the stronger player has the advantage the more time is in the clock. And that didn't work out for Grishuk because Grishuk's mouse speed wasn't there. But I know NBL has the mouse speed to play when there are no time. Like, Look how quickly they're... Yep. I mean, I can't even speak that fast. Look at like 92, 96, 83. You know, I can talk like an <laughs> altitude. I can do it. But I don't want to. I want to save my voice. And here, save your voice. Save your voice. It's a beautiful voice. We want it here. I want to yeah. package it up like an evil sea witch. A Put sea witch? A shell. What are you calling... And, uh, what's her name? Ursula? Ursula. The Little Mermaid? Um, I know you watch that movie a lot. All right. Leon Beast, currently up on the clock by just two seconds. I feel like uh -oh. these guys had... Ooh, but he just hung it upon on C3. Straight up, dog. That's, yep. a, that's a pawn. And C5 is protected by the knight on D7. Yeah, C5 so take was protected D4. by the knight on D7. Maxime just down a pawn. It's a passer. But it's not easy to keep that pawn, actually. Yeah, but the D3 pawn's also weak. Okay. Yeah, but he, he should double some rooks in the B file. Uh, rook B2. Okay, or not. He placed that move, I think, to try to get the bishop to F1. But he, you were probably right. He probably should have gone for your plan. Um, well, note the bishop is... guarding the B4 square here. Yeah. So he tries Queen... to get rid of it, yeah. Queen b3, but then b4. Look at that pawn. That's a very okay, far advance. Now the e-pawn opens up this bishop over here. e6 runs up the board. Watch out for this rook coming into a7. Watch out for the queen to c5. It... Okay, so he's going to work it to b7 instead because of that little landmine. But look at him. Queen takes queen and rook b6. He got his queen. Oh. Ooh, did he just blunder f2? I think he did. Uh, knight e2 is coming. But knight to queen e5 check. I was, queen he e5. has queen e5. You better hope he has a draw because... <gasps> No, there's no bishop d5 pinned. No, but rook a7. Queen g1 is only one check. Oh my check. gosh, that would be a nutty turnaround. And if rook f7 here? Oh, he sacks his queen. He instead gives of up his queen to avoid the mate, but now, now uh, Maxime in an easy spot to blockade. Yeah, and look at the time situation as well, Dan. Bishop c4 also just quickly guards d3 and stops the b-pawn. Yeah, rook b7 is an easy gathering of King that g5. little pushka. King g5. Wow. Go mate him. King g6. King takes g6. King h6. Oh, over. stalemate. No, it's not stalemate. Ooh. No, he doesn't oh, have stalemate. The bishop check guards g8, and it's mate and bake. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Hedgehog. That was nuts. Danny, what I was going to say, without that b-pawn, there were stalemating tricks, right? Because we yeah, always yeah. looked at the king Renegade up squares. Rook. Yep. Woo! Always Leon watch out for that. We already saw some epic stuff. Remember the one that Grishuk should have won, the first game of that match where he stalemated? I mean... I'm, I'm, I gotta admit, I'm a little upset that my pick didn't move on, but it's not just because I picked it. I thought Grishuk was the better player, and he just, it, that feels like a match that if you had them go again, Grishuk might get. Yeah, I would say that Grishuk takes maybe, you know, six out of ten, seven out of ten matches, but this was the day for Bortnik, and Bortnik yep. has been, it's a been beast. Bortnik's week. Yep. Bortnik strong. Yeah, I, lo I love that. I love your Bortnik strong. You need yep. a wristband. Can you, can you create those? Yeah, Bortnik strong. <laughs> all right. Well, here, all of a sudden, you just did the John Bartholomew laugh. <laughs> uh, wait, but Ponce is getting this one. Hi, guys. It's John. <laughs> hey, guys. Rook D1. Trade rooks. If All right. Put the bishop back on E4. He does it faster than I can highlight it. He's got bishop D3 and A6 is under under fire. So that's what uh, Ponce maybe should shoot for. Uh, A4 was bad. He's he's taking his time. A little Now now these pawns are going to get going. Yeah. He took too much time. 
Yep, should have should have tried to corral that A pawn earlier. Knight B seven forks the A pawn. Oh, he misses it. But Knight B seven would have won A five for a full. Look at these, these pawns, full steam ahead. I guess you. Yeah, yeah B six. B six wins a piece. Okay, B six. Bishop has to give up, give and itself up. Yep. But okay, like uh, Maxime's got some comp a little bit. Play H five and then maybe try to bring the king into F four. Yep. This is a big Ooh. problem though. Yeah, he should he should maybe. Okay, should, he's should gonna go for. I, I, other than the clock, I really don't think that Maxime has bad chances here at all. And actually, the clock doesn't worry me that much. I mean, it's obviously not good. Four. If that forces Bishop G five, here comes the pawns. Yep. It's a very tough spot to be in on a nice practical move, rookie level four. if you're white. No, this is, Maxime's not losing this game. He's going to win this yep. game. The question is wins. whether Maxime will swindle him. He's going to play g4. Okay, probably you have to sit tight, though. If you push too hard, remember, this light square bishop is the right color corner for white to ultimately win this endgame, so you got to be careful if you're Maxime. Right. But here, king b4 and yep. king a3. And this Should be a draw. Let, yep. Let's tickle this one out. Tickle it out. But Maxime's in trouble. But the problem is he can't pre-move as easily, right? Yep. The bishop pre-move is he very easy. He needs to pre-move. He needs to take the risk and just pre-move. Take h4. Go king takes h4. Is it not a draw yet? He hasn't repeat. Oh, but now he's done it. Now he's going to lose on time. Yep, he lost. Wow. Ponza working the bullet prowess. Maxime's going to have... He was in one that he couldn't pre-move. That's a really interesting uh, bullet strategical moment to highlight because the reason why, everybody, Maxime couldn't pre-move is because at some point, Ponza was going to take that pawn on h4 with the king, and if Maxime had pre-move, he would lose both pawns instead of pushing g2. Yep. So as Robert said, from a practical perspective, Ponza had the much, much, uh, much, much better hand there. Yeah, absolutely. Crazy. And Ponza playing well, playing quickly here. He's trying to... This is some Team Scandi type stuff, even though it's a Karakhan, so it's all John yep. Bartholomew today. Hi, guys. Team Scandi. <laughs> Knight h4. Just take this bishop. Okay, now I can't do that. It's knight e5. Uh, watch out for knight d7. He's avoided it. So, okay. Play white's... a3. A3, king of two, and go for c4. Why is more space here? Go g4, yeah. h4. Yeah, it should be straightforward. Slightly better for white. Slightly, yeah. slightly better. Ooh, rook a1. Okay, or not. Okay, but now you push that. I thought he would go bishop c7. Maybe the pawn had gone a little too far. Apparently not. Uh-oh, he blundered a piece. Oh, he's got a tactic with c5 coming next Wait, move. why do you go bishop takes d5? Oh, he just missed it. Bishop takes d5 was fine. And then rook, the bishop c2, rook d2. Okay, the point, everybody, was rook takes d3 would have lost to... to, to you had oh tactic coming gosh. with c5 and knight of four check, but bishop takes d5 was fine for Maxime. So right now, not looking like Maxime has his A game, which for those of you looking for an upset, that might be just what the doctor ordered. Speaking of placing orders, apparently Federico Ponza gives chess lessons in Spanish and English at the same time. Spanglish. He goes full Adam Sandler during his lessons. <laughs> yeah. That's a great reference. And you never want to go full Adam Sandler because full never. Adam Sandler is Jack and Jill, which is like Dibbity the worst boobop. movie. Dip it to do. <laughs> Some of his early movies are pretty good. Jack and Jill is the worst movie of all time. Even worse than The Room. All right, so Bishop H4. So <laughs> I had to ignore you. Queen of two. Points. Queen of two is coming for it. No, he doesn't go for it. All right. King G1. He's going to double rooks on the H file. Make Harry a wizard. He's going to do it. Rook G1, he'll put the king on A2. Yeah. Okay, yeah. the problem is can you get the lady over? I don't think he can. So Maxime's extra H pawn may be just fine since he didn't get any pressure here. Look at that. Rook G1. He's an extra H pawn. That pawn is rolling down the board. Simplification killed the Genghis K. Knight... B3 at some moment looks pretty good. Maybe three yeah, now. Yeah, maybe three looks real good. You can also take on B5 first. But I don't. I don't want to. I want yeah, to see. You don't want to open a base six. So now he'll trade so that the knight can put him to C5 with check. He does. This is like a slightly but, worse version. Yeah, I was going to say, but what's the follow up? It's like he he played that tactic, but now what? Right? Bishop E8. Bishop E8. Okay. Ah, uh, he should have gone to E8. You got to work that bishop around to target F3. That's our weakness right there. That's the yep. pawn you want. I don't think Maxime saw that plan at all, and I think it's going to cost him. Now who's, now who's past one is stronger? The A pawn. Oh, but the, the king safety. Whose king is weaker? I don't know. It looks like Maxime oh, he's going to try to take on F3, but king runs to A4. King B3. King B3. If he, yeah, if he takes with check, he's going to lose the bishop. He does it. That was a mistake. Queen D1, no. though. No, he didn't see it. Maxime just does not have his A game right now. He's king missing runs. tactics I'm seeing. King's running. King's but running, but White's much better. No, but look at the time situation. Extra five seconds for Maxime. Ah, uh, I didn't see that. Okay. Queen to C2. He still has Queen D7 check unless he gets himself mated in the next few seconds. Nope. Looks like he's going to get this one on F2. the clock. He queens. 
Oh, oh skewer! Oh my gosh! Nastiness! Go E2! Ponta Just... can win! Oh my oh, god! <laughs> that was dirty. Even my producer flipped out about that. <laughs> Shout out to R in Hawaii, everybody. The producer is in the house. We've got this thing on lock right here. Hi, Maxime. How are you in the office and playing chess at the same time, buddy? You're wow. creeping in the corner. Wow, man. Is that Nathan Lane? Because that is one heck of a producer. <laughs> Woo! This is a, such oh, an exciting man. match. Wow. Right now we see that Maxime with the white pieces is one a pawn. And he can take on C6 and take a second pawn if he so chooses. Yep. Look at this. This is turned in Maxime's favor thanks to that win. Cover your pawns. Play rook B1. Play rook F to C1 if you need to. Yeah, even I was going to say even C3. You played it before I could highlight it. Just a nice solid structure. Shouldn't be enough for pawns to, uh, to have compensation. Two pawns are too many. Wow, someone just hit up, I see uh, Mas Masochist Girls and or Zero uh, Mostel, and that is a great freaking actor and a great reference. Fiddler on the Roof, shout out. Anyway, back to the chest. We have Maxime <laughs> up two pawns. He's going to go C4 now. He can keep making progress. What are you laughing yep. about? Fiddler on the Roof? There's nothing That's funny right, about it. right, of course. Besides everything in the play, but not about what it really means. But okay, we Thank can talk you to Diamond this. Member Whimsical Bug for answering everybody's questions in the Chess TV chat. Appreciate it. Yes, Hikaru did win narrowly earlier today. Thanks for being with us right now. Hikaru will be back in just a moment after this match. The semifinals will begin. Um, yep. So C3 is protected. Knight. I mean, White just has more pawns and more space. But look at the clock. Wow. You know, he's like, he's just up on time. And that's a big deal here. <laughs> yeah, but, and that the the amazing Excuse thing me. is he's been he's been down two pawns everybody for like you know a minute here and he's still staying on the board. So Maxime has has got to find a way to put this one away yep. before he gets under under time pressure. Yep, and look at him go. He's moving quickly here. Yeah, now he's figured it out. Going to get the rooks off. Try to advance Dirty Daryl here on the D file. Rook D four. What? Okay, he's playing Rook D three. D six. D six. Right. Daryl's going dirty dancing. Right. De Nobody puts baby in a corner, but I'm going to put the queen on c8. Oh, he should have done it. F3. Just do it. Take it. Just, yeah, simplify it. But you have a couple seconds here. Oh. Queen f6, queen h1. He's going to block on e3. No, he doesn't. He keeps the deep on. And, oh, look at him get out of checks. King c2. Look at him work the geometry to get the king out of checks. Wait, but so it's many checks. It's only a matter of time before the king's out of checks. King b2, and it's over. No, but time, time. Three, three seconds. seconds. Hurry up, Maxi. Check. He's, you he's, gotta give some checks. You gotta give queen. some checks. Queen. Get a queen. King b6. Is it gonna be made or is he gonna lose all the time? Oh, he made it. He made it, but he's gonna. It's gonna be a draw. What a finish oh, there. Oh my god, Ponza takes a deep breath. Oh my gosh, I need a deep breath. Maxime waited too long with oh the king god. shuffle. There were ways to get out earlier. I think queen c8 earlier when I highlighted the baby in the corner reference, which you didn't even acknowledge me for. What are you saying I didn't acknowledge you for? Dirty <sighs> Dancing is a great yeah. movie. Thank Patrick you. It is a great Swayze. Movie. Patrick Swayze. Oh my gosh. How are you giving me that? You're acting like I ghosted you. Oh, you see how I went from one Patrick Swayze oh, to another? Oh, nobody goes Whoopi Goldberg on my show and gets away with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We're having a great time. I'm having a blast, Danny. Thank you. Oh, bro. dude. He's got his night trap. We're going to play Queen C2 and go Getty 4. We got eight, 8,600 people here in the. In watching yeah, we this. do. And look at E pawn. So double E pawn. Yeah. Why you you got to put a queen on e3, blockade it? No, Ponza wants more than that. He's going to put a rook Now back anymore. up to e3 where you hit b6. Give me that b2 pawn. All right, so now yep. what, h4? Yep, I'm just going to like try to keep highlighting moves before they play it. I like, like it. I know, rookie, because <laughs> it's fun. Queen h6 is coming with rook b7. Yeah, yeah. rook takes would have allowed rook d1 in mate. The, the queen guarded the square. I mean, what, what Leon Beast did was he nope. tried to get rid of this knight, which is going to go to the dark squares, but all of a sudden his king feels less safe with the g6, e6 one. Rook e6 takes e6, e6 free pawn. Yeah, just, dude. MVL is falling apart in this game. Rook oh, Rook G2. King H oh, King H7's mate with Queen H5. Nice Ooh, move, Rook G4. What a swindle there. Nice move. Okay, but he can actually take E2. Yep. And oh, oh he really loses the Rook. He loses. What a swindle. Oh, my gosh. Hey, Genghis Khan called. He wants his brutal brutal activity behavior back with that username. Whew. Whoa. Right. Dude, the upset is, is in motion. Yeah. Well, I mean, what's Dude, the make of Ponza this? Ponza is playing well there. You know, it's just taking over his territory, right? That's exactly what just happened. Yep. He went, he went Expanding. full on. Expanding. Uninvited. Just, you know, I was about to go into Genghis Khan. I, I shouldn't go yep. there. I'm going to stay. I'm going to 
keep that to myself. But right now, Leon Beast, he's got control of the C file. Black has many weak squares on the queen side. You want to go with bishop b5. So bishop b5, yeah. it protects c4. It stops queen going to a4. It hits the knight e2. Uh, but it's knight a6 is a bad piece. So right now, if you're white, you might even want to try to get your king to h2, play h4, give bishop to h3. Your bishop's doing nothing on g2. It's exactly what he's doing. And yep. all right. Bishop Plaza, playing well. Playing well. Got to put the knight on c1 here, I think. Oh, I thought he would go knight c1 first to guard this queen c4 fork. Well, knight c1 can and still protects play it now. c1 and then b3. Okay, so if queen it. c3 you trade and play bishop takes c5. If yeah, queen if d4, knight e4, you win a piece, so you can't take on e4. Take it. Yeah, looks and like MVL yeah. might be about to recover here. Push a4. Can yeah, I like it. it. Ooh, oh, but I don't knight love d3 that. and the c pawn's going to get dangerous. Yeah, knight takes. Yeah, I don't know that b4 was as good as a4 by Maxime. But I guess it's king. Oh, he's going to play king h7 and bishop h6. That's his idea. You have g4. Oh, or not. I thought g4 and g5 was better, Robert. You were right. That would have been better. Take, he could take a king e3, and now he's winning. His king's yeah, close he's enough. still in time, though. A4. A4. Yep. Here comes the pawns. Two are better than one. He's going to play g4 and deny the king. No, he takes it. Actually, that was smarter. I was waiting for you to go, here comes the Ponzo reference, but it's not happening. Here comes happening. the Ponzo, h5 and h6. Yep, they're winning. Yep. King d2, don't be fooled. Trying to catch him in a pre-move. Yep. Trying to catch him in a pre-move, but it's over. Ponzo resigns. The match is even yet again with 15 and a half minutes remaining. Woo! I'm excited, Danny. Right? Did you just go? Did you just go, Nasty Boy, Ric Flair? Uh, you mean Nature Boy? Nature Boy, whatever. Yeah, I did. <sighs> right. I mean, you want me to get that from the the core of my being? I get all like really intense in there. But I, you know, Ric Flair. We'll save the flair for the the chessboard here. Yeah. And hey, right now, I'm wearing 37 pieces of flair. All right. Right now. Uh, uh, what? If you want me to wear 37 pieces of flair, make 37 the minimum flair. I don't know Ooh. what's happening here. You don't know the reference I'm going with right now? No, I didn't. Dude, it's Office Space with the flair. Oh, man. Well, I mean, I was not well, I was talking about Ric Flair, and you went all Office Space on me. Yeah, dude. Queen D4 is coming, followed I'm... by attacks on the dark switch. He'll play Queen E5, if not F6. Okay, Knight C5. Knight C5. Hit E6. E6 is falling. King is Knight of 4. Knight of 4 hitting G2 with mating threats. Knight of 4 now. He no, still doesn't... has it. No, but Queen, Kate's, queen yeah. would have taken it. But the 9d5 is a very good piece. It protects the Yeah, the 9d5, despite being down the exchange, queen. Maxime is not in a bad spot here. Yeah, I want the queen to go very to h4. Very well centralized. So what's going on here? And by the way, you know, your office space, if you give me 16 candles, I'll get the reference. Office space is a little more difficult. You know me. Come on. We got to get on yeah. that, you know, romantic teen uh, comedy. Yeah, thing. the John Hughes movies. You got those on lock, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, and... queen takes h4. Notice c7 is guarded. I think Pawns has just straight up missed that, by the way. Yep. He's I think he one. could. Oh. Queen, yeah. King F6 would have allowed Queen D8, so he offers the lady trade. And Ooh, now you can now you could have played Knight F4, maybe. Maybe. Okay, Maxime is going to try to open the King the old-fashioned way with the H pawn. The Knight F4 is an outpost now, right? If you're a G3, you would be your King. Frightens G2. If F3, watch out for H3. Here yep. it comes. Yep, he's doing it. Queen takes now F3. Queen takes F3. It's got to be mate. King G6, Queen E8. I don't know. I don't know that White. I don't know that White doesn't have a perpetual. You're right. There's a perp. Yep. He doesn't get out. It's Amazing hold there. What's happening? Peter. Hey, Robert. What? What? What'd you say? I'm going to need you to come to work on Saturday for the Bullet Chess Championship. That's what I'm doing right now, Danny. And I know you the reference you're, you're trying to pull off there. Because I see the, what's happening. Show us your O face, Robert. I don't, don't want to get into <laughs> I am so disappointed in you right now. Why are you disappointed but, in me? And I'm rarely disappointed in you. You know that. Why are you disappointed in me? Because you're not getting the office space references. I just literally said I get the office space reference, but I don't want to okay. talk about it right now. It's All right. Really Fine, let's spot. focus. All right. Queen F4 guards the D pawn required if you want to hold on to it. Uh, A3 first to stop knight B4 and then play C4. No. He plays C3. Oh, man. We've had All this right. structure a few times, and Maxime hasn't gotten a lot out of it. Well, white is better because of the pawn structure, right? But watch yeah, out. Yeah, so he's going to keep playing for it. A2 is hanging, but E7. The rook would infiltrate in E7. So you got to watch out for that. But that's why he went A4, A3. H5. If he gets it all the way to H6, he'll be real happy. Yep. Now he'll play F3. Yep. Then King F2. Nice um, move F4 to keep the king out. The king wanted to go. Yeah, from, very nice by Ponza. Agreed. But, but white what? should still be better. Yep. Pawn majority on the queen infiltrate side. Infiltrate along the E file. That's what he's going to do. Takes so A4, E5. Uh, I wonder five. if you should have just gone rookie seven right away, but okay. Um, C4. Oh, now but if you try to C4. put the rook in a spot to poke at weaknesses on both sides of the board. Um, Here goes rook C5. And then C5. And then rook C5? 
Yep. All right. Okay. This this makes sense. Rook C five. also works. The A pawn's falling. Play Rook A five. Rook takes A four. Just and do then it. Rook E six. Rook E two is what he's scared of, I guess. Ah. Okay. Okay. Nice. Okay. This is nice. Going okay. In, going in with the king. Look at pawns that getting counterplay though. D five. Everything. Everything's riding on the uh, oh, on the D pawn. G four. G four. So crafty. Oh my gosh. Man. Rook E two check. And you get a queen with check. So what's going on? There's so many F-pawns. I've never seen this many F-pawns. but they're all doubled. They're Pawns tripled. only a mother could love. They're ugly ducklings. Uh oh but King G2. But he's going to win. King Too G many F-pawns, not enough time. Hashtag title your autobiography. No, it's way for black. Hey, hey, too many F-pawns, not, not enough time. Title your chest tape. No, don't like it. Don't like it. Title your chest tape. Don't do that to me, Danny. <sighs> oh, man, that was so much fun. Oh, my gosh. Hansa. Ponza. What the f pawns was that? Wait, am I allowed Ponza. to say that? Like, is that okay? Ponza. Ponza. It's a people kept seeing it as a Ponza scheme. Wow. Yeah. Never go for, full Bernie Madoff. Never go full Keanu, Keanu Reeves. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. This is nuts. G three <laughs> takes. Put the king on G two. I mean. I just love the way Ponza's playing. <laughs> Ponza! <laughs> MBL will be forever shattering the rest of his life. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> you guys All are, right. You guys MBL tough. has got to turn things around. He only has 10 minutes to do so. Hikaru Nakamura already won his match earlier today. Some of you just showing up. He will be playing in the semifinals, I believe, right after this match. We oh, have a, two, yeah. more, two more semifinals matches coming up. <coughs> F5E4 is going to be really F5 strong. F5E4. MBL is going to turn it around right here. Ooh, nice move on the dark squares. Double attack, hitting B7 and pinning the pawn. Yep. Takes a 6. Is he going to go for the H file? No. He's got to keep the queens on the board if he... I was wondering if you can play G5, G4 and try to put a rook on the H file, but too slow. Pawns as pawns are running. Pawns of pawns. Yep. Queen hey. A2. Queen A2. Hey, Hit. Pawns, are those some pawns on the C and D file? You're just happy to see me there. Pawns of pawns. I, I don't know what to say to that. Queen knight f 2 He had knight f 2 Queen knight 2 That was a brilliant move. Queen f 2 yes. check is mate. I, I saw knight f 2 king f 2 queen f 2 check there, but this is even stronger. Uh, or is Wait, it but, stronger? but where's... Okay, I thought he had even more. I guess I guess the, all he's getting, uh, maybe he has to take with the queen now. He had e3 oh, he's got there. the H file. Oh, pawns man. has to stop it. Don't play f6 because the queen b7 check winning the rook. Pons is going to do everything he can to stop MBL from... Look at that move. G5. Here comes Queen oh, takes F6. Man. Queen G6. Ponza is the only one who can win yet again. Take on H8. Just take the Rook. He should okay. take on H8 and flag him. Yep. Take on H8 and flag him. That's bullet chest, baby. Do it. Oh, he my He takes the gosh. draw. Ponza. Ponza. Is he letting you down there? He did. I thought he was going to go full upset. Man, every time. <laughs> Although at this point, who's higher rated in Bullet on Chess.com, right? Yeah, it's it's all Ponza. He's about to go full Dragon Ball Z over nine thousand. Um, wow. <sighs> Did you Speaking of which, we have over nine thousand viewers. Over nine thousand. Why are you Thank making you for Dragon Ball here. Z references, dude? You know me. I'm a hater of that kind of stuff. Hey, I just, I super, just super, him. super, Scion. Rook takes E2. Rook takes E2. No, he had Rook huh? takes E2. Rook takes E2 is just winning. To remove the guard of the bishop. Dude, Pons is getting nervous now. He's up a game, and I feel like his play has gone down a little bit from the last two. He's trying to be super solid here. Yeah, it's like, unnecessary. He got to keep playing aggressive here. He got to do it, right? Instead of super solid. got to go, girl. Instead of super solid, he should be super Saiyan. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, super Saiyan. Oh, man. Well... You you did, you did start this. I'm just ending it. All C5. Right. You got to keep C5. it closed. Yep. But now that bishop's going to work itself into the D spot. Bishop OMG. D5 coming. Bishop A and the queen comes to H3. Watch out. Got to put your king on G2. Stop it. Uh-oh. Okay. Stops it with the old trade. He tried to trade everything, but here at Rook F5. Queen F5. Queen H3. Yeah, this is, this is what Ponza needs to go for. Maxime, again, in a tough spot, down six seconds in a position where Ponza's poking at both sides of the board. G4, what's that? I think he had to. Because if King G2, there was Queen C2 anyway. So I think G4 was the only way to stop Queen H3. 
All right. Well, he's trying to go h5. It's not going to happen. The queen can just nope. sit on the fifth rank. Got to play fast. Rookie seconds. seven. Oh, rookie seven hangs d4. Got rookie seven coming at some point. Yeah, d4 okay, is hanging. Now, now, now he'll seven. do it. Oh, I thought he would do it there. Yeah, so, he goes for it now. Trade. If you trade and play queen d6, actually, that's not so bad. Now you got d5. All right. He could have oh, taken on d6. Again. Yeah, it's going to be a draw again, isn't it? Ponza is just holding every time you think that Maxime is about to get an inch. Ponza takes a mile. Look at and it, uh, to go full Vin Diesel, put away your coloring books, Vin Diesel fans. Oh, it's time man. to focus on some chess. Winning's oh, winning, man. whether it's by an inch or a mile. Man. And so uh, I see 5-5-6, uh, five, five, AR-15 says, Hesh lost some points. It's probably because I made a, a Dragon Ball Z reference, which I didn't want to do, but I was just trying to help yep. you out there, Danny. I didn't want to leave you hanging. All right, D4. This is a complicated line already. All right. No, but it, it jokes aside, everybody, this is a great time. Thank you for being with us. But this is this is seriously... Uh, upset territory now. With under six minutes, if Ponza gets one more game, that two-game lead might just be insurmountable. Again, we're battling the hair along with our opponent today. Is that a, the hair? Yeah. My hair? You're always the making comments hair, on your red, haircut. The French hair emote. I'm talking about the clock, buddy. Okay, well, I need a haircut. I'm being a little self-conscious about it. Okay, knight c5. Go knight c5. Or actually, this is even better. Take on b7. Take on eight. No, take on b7, rook a7. So he goes c5 now. But I don't like this because now bishop sits on c6. And you could have put your yeah. knight on c5. I agree. I, I love Ponce's position again. Bishop h3. Po oh, I don't think that was the best. Well, he's trying to get that bishop off the board. Rook b rook Yeah, but rook d7 eight. and black's holding now. Well, rook d7, knight takes d5. You take with the e pawn. That doesn't look friendly. So you go rook b8. So you can take with the rook on d5. But, ooh, e6 is uh, okay, so five. Maybe, Hit maybe e5. Ponce. He actually had e e5 some tactics there with a deep pawn hanging. Maxime is not seeing all the tactics today. Okay, but now he wins a piece, huh? Yep. So he saw some tactics that Ponza, we didn't. Well, Ponza blundered, taken there with the knight. He got he got greedy. And Rook now, takes d5. Rook takes d5. Rook takes d5 should be simple. Yep. And okay, Maxime we're going to have a tied up. match with under five minutes to play, everybody. Danny, right. this might be a recency bias, but I think this is my favorite match thus far. I don't like, know. This is, that is recency bias. I mean, the Hikaru Nakamura Ali Faruja match literally had my heart like racing. Thank God I wasn't wearing a heart monitor. Yeah, but now I that my know. heart's still in my chest, I'm, I'm okay. I'm feeling close enough. We should enough, put Danny. heart monitors on us as hosts. Oh, like, and that would be that. just like a Danny heart rate watch. <laughs> like, have we checked on his high blood pressure lately? <laughs> Queen B3. <laughs> Hang on, B wait, wait, wait. What, Queen what, B3, what? it was a fork, Maxime. What's You're going not... on? He's missing He's missing tactics. He's nervous, right? Not, neither of these guys want to lose, but unfortunately, they're playing like it. Got to play to win. Yeah, don't hold anything back. Yep. Last game of the year, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop G5. Yeah, no, this is G3. What is that? That's just too accommodating the, for the black. Too, com too accommodating, too polite. These guys are playing not to lose right now. Play Bishop of four. There you go. Play, Play G4. G4. Oh, Jinx. G4 was there. You owe me a Coke. I don't even drink soda. <laughs> oh. Oh. Wait, what was that? that was an evil. Uh, I was thinking of something else. <laughs> I'm thinking of something else. <laughs> that was <laughs> evil, man. <laughs> B4 is coming, though. Speaking of evil, he does it. B5 next. Use your pawns. He does it. I'm calling the shots. We got C4 on the board. Watch uh, out. But watch out for that backward C pawn. Yep. Put a bishop on C6 and go hit the B pawn. I like that. Rook B8. Bishop yep. C5, though. Take okay, it. he can trade, but then you got to watch out for the second rank. So yes. that's irritating. Yeah, he just decides to back up. Good call by Maxime. But black is better. Is, that C5 is amazing. Yeah, all of a sudden the issue is that the the black has coordinated very well. You got to stop e3. But uh, uh, Ponza might just take the draw. Ponza nope, should play for a win. More. Absolutely, he's winning. Yeah. And Maxime, dude, with a one game lead and three minutes to play, can Maxime come back? We're about to find out because I think Ponza is going to win this one. Look, Rook c7 he's lose on only time. moves. Play Rook c7. He resigned. That's actually a very smart practical decision because now he could get two more games in possibly if you're Maxime. Yeah. He definitely will get two more games in, right? Because there's yes, he, yes. With over three two minutes, minutes left, there will be two more games in regulation here. So if it's tied, we go to overtime. Or, or uh, right now, it looks like it's Ponza's match. Man, that was you're right. That was really, really smart there by Leon B. So we get another knight or of position. Wait. That... Oh, and Pons it just just hangs his head. He's like, oops, oops, I just blundered a piece. Yep. And that's a piece. And what Maxime needs to do is win this game. Yep. Maxime has to win this game to tie it up, and we have one game winner take all, assuming Maxime can get the job done here. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that yet. Rook G6. Play Rook G6 to cover the Rook F6 square. Guard F6 and then play Bishop H6 and get developed. Yep, he does it.
And now you can even put go. knight f6. There it is, knight okay, g3. Also good, right? Simple yep. chess. Bring the bishop to h6. Put it on f4. Develop your pieces. I yeah, like Pons this. Is going to be but all in on tilt here. Ponza, he's is lost. taking way too much time. I don't care that he's up a piece. This is this is bad sign. Well, his king is safe now. E4 is a threat. E4 is a threat. He finds it. There it is. Ponza missed it. Yep. He's, okay, he's not going to resign as he shouldn't. But knight d2 is coming. He's going to do it anyway. Way too much material. Wow. Okay. We are going to have a tied match with only a minute to play, I'm guessing. Queen f1. OMGs or snaps. Queen g1, bishop f4 check, rook e3 check, and mate on e3. Okay, he didn't go queen g3. So he had it. <gasps> rook e7. Okay. That scared There's me There's f7 there. falling and no checks. Okay, it scared me. Like, yeah, I thought he <laughs> Oh, rook e5 is winning the queen on the spot. But he didn't see mate. it. He's mating him. Queen yeah, okay, G3's he's mating him on h6, so he doesn't care. Take on g5, actually. Just go queen d4 next, he'll probably preem of it. Rook e4 next. Oh, you're right. I was thinking Queen takes G5 is a pretty resigned. Well. And we have liftoff, ladies and gentlemen. If you didn't think the Bullet Chess Championship was a for real. This, this is amazing hype. stuff. This bleep is hype, as the kids say. The chat is lit. The, hey, you didn't sound like a dad when you said that. The chat is lit. Yeah, you really hey, sound Hey, fam, it's lit. This <laughs> is good old-fashioned family fun here on Chess.com. Hit that follow button before you go anywhere else and make sure you, uh, you mark, down, mark down the day you discovered that chess was awesome on Twitch if you happen to be watching this channel for the first time. Also, look at Ponza. How is he just hanging out like that? Dude, he's just, he's he's rocking like a G6. He's fly. And he's up on time again. Okay, we've had, okay, but now Maxime feels like he's in his own. Guys, whoever wins this game is winning the match. This is it right here. Yeah. It all comes down to this. So right now, <laughs> you could trade all the rooks in the H file, but it doesn't look exciting. It's a knight G4. If I'm Maxime, I did not like allowing that move. Knight on g4 is a really annoying piece. Someone just called me the Joe Biden of chess. I've heard the Joe Rogan of Joe Biden of chess. I mean, what? That's a little strange. <laughs> Super strange. <laughs> I don't know what to make of it. Okay. That. Maxime is the bishop pair, but you got to be careful. If you overextend the structure, that's how things backfire. Yep. This is it. The time is up. Whoever wins this wins this match and moves on to the semifinals. I like Maxim's chances right now. Bishop F6. Oh, Ponza allowed it. Bishop that B8. was a huge mistake. Oh, look at that. Bishop E5. Queen E8's mate. Queen E8 was mate. Was it? Oh, oh no, it was Queen F8. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my scared gosh. Me. What Bishop is happening takes here? But Queen B2 check is on the board. If he see, he does see it. The king tucks. Tucks. H8. Do we have a draw? Do we have overtime? We have overtime. We're going to have overtime. We have overtime. Oh, my gosh. He offered a draw, and he's thinking... That's, isn't it a draw? It's a draw. We wow. have overtime. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is it. Overtime. Both players should be wins. told. We have informed them. It is overtime. Yupper doodle scoodle. Oh, my gosh. So it's another night or underway here. Don't hang your piece in F5 this time. Okay, your piece is not even getting to F5, says Leon Beast. And we have a night or with the Bishop Fianchetto on G7. Uh, uh, right now, more like a Dragadorf, right? It is kind of a Dragadorf. Like a dragon, right. not a baby. And so in overtime, everybody, it's 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 actually as simple as what the last game was at regulation. Whoever wins next wins. Okay, That's it. Well, the own beast. So oh, two seconds. Uh, it, this is it, guys. We are on the edge of our seats until until one of these mama birds feeds us. Keep your mouth Knight open. C5. Knight C5. Baby birds. <laughs> he missed an opportunity to play Knight C5. The pawn was pinned to the queen. It attacked the oh, bishop when he takes the pawn on B7. They're both nervous. And the MVL's up on time. Not anymore. He's in a he's position. Not. But his position's looking pretty good here. Yeah, I was going to say, he's in a position he should know well. This is right up his alley. Maxime, one of the most feared Sicilian players on the planet. But but look 93. at that. 93, it's also threatening what mate on F1. It? This is it! Rook F1 is made! It's and made. he's going to the quarterfinals, oh, semifinals. Oh my god, Maxime raises oh. his hands. Maxime. Oh my gosh, oh, what oh, an yeah. epic match. Oh, Holy oh, man. crap, Pawns of Blunders. The mate on F1, and it was the checkmate previously set up by the forky moat heard around the world. Queen E2 oh was the only gosh. move to guard the mate. Okay, he would have gone down the exchange, but still chances. He plays Queen D2, and the reason it was over, everybody, is Rook F1. The only option was to trade. Maxime would have delivered the goods, but the eagle has landed, and we now know who our, all of our semifinals uh, competitors will be. I've lost my breath. I'm about <laughs> to lose my voice. And I don't want to lose my bleep on camera, so we're going to take a very quick break and be right back with interviews by these players. Don't go where, don't go anywhere, anybody. We'll be right back. And we are back now, joined by our our two competitors here, 
Uh, these guys gave us all the entertainment, all the all the the, the thrilling action we could have asked for. Um, I, I'm not sure if Federico, if you can hear us yet. Yes, yes, I'm here. Hello, I, uh, I I have to say that was that was an amazing an amazing match. I know it didn't quite turn out the way you wanted, obviously, but um, when you had a one game lead with just a few minutes to go, was there a part of you that maybe got nervous? Did was there any part of your style that changed in hindsight? Maybe would have done differently, or do you feel like it was just Maxime completed a, a comeback? No, actually, I was uh, I'll tabbing all the time trying to see how much time was left, but yeah, I was so nervous. It never felt like this uh, playing just bullet in, in chess.com. I mean, it was an amazing turn of events there. Maxime, I guess the question for you is, did you feel like you were going to lose that match when you were down, uh, losing on the scoreboard and the time was ticking down where there weren't many games left remaining? Um, well, I wasn't completely sure how much time there was left. So, uh, but the match was so back and forth and... Uh, at the beginning, I felt I played a few, uh, but okay, it's always like this in bullet. You play your moves and you realize you're the winner and whatever. But uh, yeah, I felt like I upped my level at some point. But uh, in general, it was a very tense match. Like I was almost never in the lead. I think I was always trailing by one point or something. But uh, yeah, then it turned out fine. The so night off came to my rescue. The clo yeah, I was going to say the night of came to your rescue, but the, the closest you seem to be coming to, I, I don't even want to use the word tilt, but where it didn't, it, we were we were wondering whether you would recover, was the game where you resigned after Bishop takes D3. Bishop takes D5. Even, even yeah, the, I have Bishop takes D5. Exactly, uh, and we were wondering. As I, re as I resigned, but uh, uh, but I was already like, what's this move G4? Anyway, I was going to lose this game, so that's why I recovered, because I saw the Bishop D5, even CD before, it just stopped pressing bullets. Federico, did you did you maybe surprise yourself with with uh, where where this match was headed? I, I know as you said you were nervous, but at a certain point when you're winning and 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 there's not much time remaining <clears throat> against one of the top players in the world, Maxime Vache Legrave, right? I mean, did did you uh, did you surprise yourself putting yourself in a spot where you you almost clinched a ticket to the semifinals? Well, I wouldn't say too much surprise. I know it's bullet. It's more even here, of course. If this match is blitz, I would lose a pretty sure. But in bullet, I, I didn't feel I, I had worse chances, actually. Uh, maybe I should have played something different with white. I mean, before the match, I was trying to think what opening I should do, and the Karokan was working very nice, but my E4 just didn't work. Maybe I should have tried the London or some more easy opening to play. Yeah, and Federico, how much preparation did you do? You said you were looking at openings before the match, but how much time would you say you spent trying to figure out both the chess moves that Maxi would play and maybe the psychology of what he would look for from you? No, I mean, today I just checked some of his last game. Also, we, we played in the in the qualification tournament. We played the same Karokan, so I kind of expected to play some games like this, but I wasn't sure with White, so I checked, like, maybe half an hour, one hour before the match, and I was trying to, to decide what to do. But OK, as I told you, I think with Black, it was fine. But with White, I think we won many more games with, with Black, actually. Yeah. Maxime, did you, did you have any ideas as far as the openings you wanted to try? Uh, you guys were, unlike the three matches we've had earlier today, you guys were pretty much creatures of habit. We kind of had a consistent approach um, by both of you guys, and was that something you planned to do coming in, or just just the nature of how this match worked out? Uh, I would say just the nature. Also, was uh, I didn't have time to look at anything because I was playing my my Bundesliga game today, which lasted longer than uh, it should have. So uh, this why I just had time to have dinner and come back to in a rush, and so I just decided to to keep things simple because uh, I was feeling a bit tired. Got it. Well, um, we know that uh, everybody's <laughs> feeling a bit tired, but they're also feeling pretty hyped. You guys really gave us a thrilling show. And uh, again, Federico, I know it didn't turn out the way you wanted, but uh, couldn't have asked for a, a better match here. Went to overtime. Did, were you guys were aware of that, that you were officially in overtime? I was. Oh, actually, I, I wasn't sure how it was working. I 
I thought maybe this game decide, but maybe you have to play some five minutes. Some I wasn't sure. Right. So I was all tabbing. I, I knew we we are, we were in overtime, but wasn't sure if this game was decided. That's why the the previous game I I take this repetition. I wasn't sure what to do, but uh, I, okay, it's turned out like this. <laughs> Well, I don't really have any other questions. I mean, I'm sure we could talk for for uh, much longer, but you know, it is bullet chess. Only so much analysis we can do. Really, just a lot of applauding by the the tactics you guys are able to see and the maneuvers you're able to come up with with so little time on the clock. So, thank you to both of you uh, uh, for for this show, Maxime. Obviously, congratulations. Let me ask you. You've been obviously following the events all week here on Chess.com, the qualifiers and the consistent performance, however swindly it is by Alexander Bortnik. What are your thoughts on what you need to do against this young guy in the next round? Uh, I've played him like forever now because I, I used to play him on the ICC all the time. Uh, so I know he, he was already a very good bullet player back then. Uh, and I think he's just very consistent, like uh, Federico. So I expect the same sort of matchup, to be honest. Okay. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Um, remind everybody that we are going to be starting the semifinals in not too long, just a few minutes from now. I'm actually going to be saying goodbye to my co-host here, Grandmaster Robert Hess, and we'll be now joined by one of the top bullet players on Chess.com, Grandmaster Eric Hansen of the Chess Bra uh, Network. So. Don't go anywhere. Um, again, Federico, great match today. We wish you luck um, in, in your future endeavors. And Maxime, congratulations. We'll see you soon. Everybody, don't go. Don't, don't do anything. I want you to sit there. I mean, yell, Mom, bring the Cheetos. You're not getting up from the chair. I'm watching you. We'll be right back.